Behind the Middle Belt killings is caliphate ethnic cleansing. Behind Niger Delta agitation is caliphate seizure of oil and gas. Behind Biafra and Odua agitation, caliphate imposed unitary Nigeria. Behind the caliphate itself is the rogue 1999 constitution. Elections 2023 is caliphate push to retain the 1999 fraud. Nigerians, say no to any further election in the country. Let's take down the 1999 constitution and save our people and our land. Since the 1999 constitution came into use, concerns have been raised by individuals and groups who believe the constitution is not a product of wide consultation and shouldn't start with we the people of Nigeria. How then can Nigeria get a constitution it can call its own? And who are those expected to open the discussions on the renegotiation of the current 1999 constitution, which has been considered by many groups as the main cog and the wheel of Nigeria's progress. This is the Eastern Eye. I am Alex Obodo. Welcome to the Eastern Eye on Afia TV, where we X-ray the political, social, and economic developments around us. Holes have been picked in the current 1999 constitution, but what really is wrong with the document? Can it be remedied, and by who? My guest tonight is Tony Nadi. He is a legal practitioner and Secretary General of the Lower Niger Congress, LNC, and co-convener of NINAS, Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination. Thank you so much, Tony Nadi, for joining me on the Eastern Eye tonight. For having me. Welcome, viewers. All right. So, is Nigeria's core problem a dysfunctional constitution arrangement and not leadership? Precisely, imposed fraudulent and totally dysfunctional constitutional arrangements. That is 100% of the problem. And uh, the leadership that we have, the leadership deficits and the dysfunctions we have seen are directly, uh, you know, caused by that constitutional arrangement that uh, cannot, uh, you know, produce uh, any better leadership. Same for the corruption we see and all the other dysfunctions we see around. That Nigeria is where it is today is on account of that imposed constitutional uh, arrangement. So typically then, if someone is asking for the constitution to be uh, re renegotiated or recalibrated, now <laughs> why would someone really call the 1999 Constitution a forgery? <clears throat> yes, the, I have a copy of the document here, and I'm sure most of our viewers uh, will have uh, either the, the, the hard copy or the virtual, the you know, soft copy. It's actually on the internet. If you click 1999 Constitution of Nigeria, uh, something is likely to come up. And so you go to the preamble that says that we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having solemnly resolved to live in unity as one indivisible, indissoluble country, then it goes down to say, do hereby give unto ourselves the following constitution. There are three fundamental lies, three foundational lies that are contained in that, uh, you know, in, that, in that preamble. And that is what renders the entire document, you know, uh, the fraud it is. Because... Um, the authors of the document also told the story of how they came about the document inside the document. Decree number 24 uh, by Absalom Abaka, that's of 1999, told the story of how they came about the constitution. They said they set up a committee uh, that went around, uh, you know, to uh, some, uh, of course, they would have been sitting in hotels and beer palace, uh, probably with uh, their, their, their men Friday uh, and, and girlfriends if they wish. And so, they came up with uh, what they brought back to the uh, Armed Forces Ruling Council of the time. That's Absalami's uh, Supreme Military Council in, in court. And that Armed Forces Ruling Council added to 
subtracted from the report that was brought back by that committee, uh, Nick Kitobi uh, was the name of the head of the committee. The bottom line, the, the important thing is that constitution making is uh, the exclusive business of those who are going to federate. Like the memo and articles of a company is the exclusive business, is the exclusive, uh, you know, uh, 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 prerogative of uh, the shareholders, the promoters, the people who want to set up company. Mr. A, B, and C are coming together to form XYZ Limited. That first coming, that coming together, that agreement to come together to risk their assets and their names, you know, in a venture they may call XYZ Limited. That is the first part they call the memorandum. Then the articles of association is the second document that they draw up after they have agreed to form, you know, uh, an, an enterprise, a, 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 a corporate entity by, by name XYZ Limited. And so, it, 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 as it is for the company, so it is for the country uh, that the constitution is the exclusive business of those who could otherwise have been countries of their own. The Yoruba will be a country of 60 million people plus. The eastern side could be a country of 70 million people plus. If Biafra had a stage, it probably would be in excess of 70 million people, bigger than most of the countries of Europe uh, of today. And uh, the same thing with the Middle Belt uh, and all the other components. But if they are going to form a union, which is what the constitution is supposed to be settle settling, the question of being in a union and uh, the question of the terms of the union, because it is in that terms of the union that you will now see the formations in which they are going to relate, uh, whether they're going to be a union of four regions or a union of uh, 10 states and all that, whether they are going to have one tier or two tiers of government, which is where you now see unitarism and, uh, you know, uh, federalism, uh, whether they're going to have a, a most of the powers loaded in the center or in the federating units. And what Nigeria, the multi-ethnic uh, nature of Nigeria was what compelled the decision in the 50s as uh, discussions were happening towards independence. It was the multi-ethnic, multi-religious uh, uh, comp uh, composition of Nigeria that uh, informed the decision by the founding fathers to agree to be a federation. And uh, all those things got toppled, you know, just uh, Nigeria was still born because it was uh, the independent, independence election of 1959 that led to all the troubles uh, for which Awolowo ended up in prison and uh, there was a breakdown of everything. And then uh, the, the soldiers came in uh, January of 1966. The counter coup leading to the, the, the fracturing of the four regions of the time that, 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 had, uh, that were the federating units. They, made, they had the constitution, they had their own constitutions ahead of the federal constitution that they went to agree upon in Lancaster House. So where we are now is that uh, from that 1966-67 toppling, because it was by 67 that they now fractured the four regions into 12 states, progressively to 19 states when Motala Mohammed came, and further to uh, 24, 30, and now we have 36 states, which was no longer a product of anybody's uh, discussion. It was now the, the people by military, the, the, the soldiers who were in power, who had seized power, who had hijacked the sovereignty of everybody, you know, uh, that were imposing these instruments by, by fiat, by decree. And so they wobbled on to 1979 when uh, they codified all of what they had done by decree, since after they abandoned the constitutions that federated us. We, we had, Nigeria had ceased to be a federation since 1966, effectively, since the counter coup of 1966. And um, what we have, we still have a country in place. And uh, this claim, this false claim that first happened in 1979 and carried forward in 1990, and that we the people, it is in that context, it is in that sense of who is it that has the power, the exclusive jurisdiction over that subject matter mm. to make a constitution. All right. This, I, uh, it, I, right. That is, it, it is in that sense that the, yes. that the constituent components of Nigeria are saying that uh, their sovereignty has been hijacked okay. and uh, a constitution has been imposed without right. reference to them. So, that has now rendered them slaves in their homelands. All right. If, if I may, uh, you know, ask a question again, you you are yes. demanding a transitioning from constitutional for a constitutional renegotiation. Uh, then who and who should be on that table? Where that renegotiation should happen? 
you know, like doctors who do, you go from, you go from a, you know, a diagnosis to prescription and then to the treatment. The prescription must be based on correct diagnosis. The treatment must be based on correct prescription in that order. And so the diagnosis that Ninas has done of uh, what has gone wrong with Nigeria, in which Nigeria is uh, the worst example of everything good, poverty capital, the, the, the packet capital of crime, such that uh, a gang of criminals have now almost, they, we, we are now under state capture and all kinds of everything you could think, uh, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Our diagnosis is that uh, it is from that point where the sovereignties of the constituent components got hijacked by this illicit federal government because you couldn't have a federal government if you do not have a federation. Nigeria ceased to be a federation from the point where the federating constitutions were jettisoned by military intervention and fiat and replaced by, you know, uh, again, military fiat, the last of them being uh, Decree Number 24 of 1999, which uh, they, they, they labeled uh, uh, the 1999 constitution. So the people who have to now rework their union, it is, a, it, is, it is basically to say we either dissolve the union now that everything has failed. You can see people are dying all over the place. People are in misery. There's danger. The face of kidnappers are on rampage. The, 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 the Fulani conquest agenda that has been there all the time, you know, has gone to a new height. You saw what's going on in Plateau. Between the last time we, we spoke, I mean, we were here last week looking at this uh, uh, aspects of this same issue, you know, between that day and now, I'm sure you've heard all of what has happened everywhere around the country, such that Ibrahim Bangida will say that if nothing is done quickly enough, that soldiers may take over. Then the Sultan in Sokoto was saying that uh, if, uh, if, if food is needed, somehow the matter is not arrested in, you know, by any means uh, possible, that uh, people are going to pour into, into the streets from the north. And uh, that means there could be a total breakdown of law and order. And, uh, and you can't tell people who are hungry and dropping dead on the streets that they are dying as in, as in dying to be buried on account of not being able to, 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 to you know, fend for themselves because of what politicians are doing in the name of governance. But it is this constitution that is at the center of everything that has included the free fall of the currency, the free fall of everything, the killings, the insecurity, the infrastructure that is in decay, the people that are running away from the country that's like a, a burning house. And so it is the constituent components of Nigeria now aggregated under the ages of a Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination that has, uh, you know, uh, rallied the people towards what they can do to recover their country, to recover their union, such that uh, uh, those in government house are not actually the, the, our quarrel is not with the people in government house, our quarrel is with the constitution by which they've uh, ruined everybody's lives, by which they've uh, hijacked our sovereignty and our economic assets and all the rights and powers to organize ourselves, our security, our elections, our infrastructure, our everything. And so we have, we have for 24 years, since the imposition of this constitution in 1999, you know, uh, gone step by step of calling everybody concerned because everybody was at everybody's uh, throat all the while. And we didn't want anarchy. We said, Ijo, why are you blowing up a pipeline of shell? They said, we don't know how our, 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 our oil and gas became the property of people we didn't discuss with. We sat down with them and showed them how it was done and persuaded them to put their guns aside for a while to come along. The same thing in the eastern side. The same thing with the OPC of uh, Ghana Dams. The same thing in the middle belt, which you see how it's all proceeding now. So we were able to uh, uh, bring these uh, constitutional grievances, these grievances that have become issues of contentions on the streets across the length and breadth of Nigeria. You know, even those who are doing, uh, even the one you call Boko Haram in the far north. Look at this map. The 12 states that impose Sharia simultaneously in year two, 12 contiguous states from Sokoto Kebi all the way to Brono and Yoba on the other side. You know, they impose Sharia simultaneously and they are contiguous. And so we say that Sharia that they wanted for which they toppled uh, the, the, the uh, uh, secular constitution, the, the secular arrangement uh, we thought we agreed upon at uh, coming to independence. What is the difference? How am I to make a distinction between that Sharia that they imposed by due process? They went to House of Assembly, the governor signed into law, they formed the Hizba and started uh, dislocating people from the place who don't uh, adhere to that. 
How am I to make a distinction between what they were looking for and what Boko Haram that now declared that it is Sharia or nothing that they were looking for? You know, and so we say that having come to that point where it looks like uh, everybody has abandoned the, 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 the union everybody agreed to be in have been by the actions of uh, some elements across uh, the union, you know, been, 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 been lost. The union is no longer there because we agreed to be a federation. We're no longer a federation. And what is a federation in the sense we are discussing? A federation is a union of, a, of, a, of a constitutions, a union of sovereignties. You bring your sovereignty, I bring my sovereignty. We are talking about land and people. Sovereignty is simply about land and people that will form a union for the purpose of what we are discussing. And so we submitted our sovereignty on account of having to be a federation with uh, autonomy levels in which uh, Awolowo could decide what he did in Western region, Emma Wara could do all of what he could do in the East, uh, Amadou Bello and Co. did what they could do in the North with their own assets, you know, driving their own development. And so when you now, when for some reason you topple all of that and you become the owner of everybody, that is what has happened to Nigeria. The management, which is what the government is supposed to be, the three arms of government are just the management team to, and for enterprise Nigeria. But the owners of that enterprise uh, and who sit at the apex of the authority the line are the peoples of Nigeria. Therefore, the right to make to... to uh, welcome everybody uh, once more. The reason we get on these town halls every week these days is to let us, is to interpret to us what is happening around us and to inform us about the things that are being done concerning those things that are happening. Whether it is the full army that is uh, invading and uh, killing in the numbers we hear, overrunning communities, kidnapping 287 pupils in one sweep, killing all over Benue, behaving traditional rulers in Ife, uh, uh, kitty areas, chasing Ijo around, the, the oil fields and uh, you know accusing them of stealing little quantities of crude or the, you know uh, destroying their refineries and killing people these things are are being done by an entity called the federal government of nigeria the army the police the, the air force the dss everything you see happening is happening is being perpetrated by an entity called Federal Government of Nigeria. If we think of um, if we think of the situation in terms of land and control of land, like an estate, when you hear that Nigeria should be an estate of uh, uh, great grandfather, the one uh, Amadou Bello was saying in the week of independence in 1960. Just take yourself out of your circumstance, like one who is going up into the sky, high into the sky. Look at Nigeria as one estate called Nigeria, estate Nigeria. In that estate, there's a Yoruba plot, there's an Ijo plot. There's an Igbo plot, there's Beron plot, there's a Do plot, there's Thief plot, Kanuri plot, Ogoni, and an Efik. That's the constituent composition of that estate. You can, you can draw the lines around their boundaries. Now, the title did, somebody owns that estate. Somebody owns that estate. That estate, the ownership, begins with the constituent component lands and peoples. Yoruba owns Yoruba land. Ido owns Ido land. Ogoni owns Ogoni land. Edo owns Edo land. Ibo owns Ibo land. You go back to 1914 when the British, without talking to any of us, fenced everybody in and set the rules of how things will go there. That was when they began to implant their own agents that will manage that estate for them 
for their own business interests, for their own national interests. They were sovereignty sitting on our sovereignty because as long as we own the land and we are distinct ethnic nations on those lands, our sovereignty was already with us. It never went anywhere. It was only suppressed by the sovereignty, that is, the superimposing force. And from that instrument by which the 1914 amalgamation was uh, executed, that became the title deed over the entire estate, spelling out what will happen. They created, they, they turned it all into three administrative units you call the regions. They began to tell what the federal government, of, what the, what the, what the you know, uh, governor general will do and what uh, the, uh, uh, the deputies in the three uh, regions would eventually in the 50s, they, it became something of a federation. That was what they agreed in 1954 to say it, it, we can only be one political union if we're a federation. In all these things, all the way from that 1954, McPherson and uh, to 1960 Lancaster House, it was all, all a matter of agreeing these components that could have been countries of their own, if not for some arrangement, agreement to be one political union. It could have been the North would have been one country of their own, the Europe would have been a country of their own, the East would have been a country of their own. By the time the Midwest, you know, uh, got out of the western region in 1963 they could have been going off as a country of their own like pakistan uh, cut out of uh, you know uh, uh, india but in all of it there was a big hand that was holding it together didn't want it to become different countries continue to manage it from outside the, you know in a manner that you didn't see that hand those who want to who want to identify that hand and the mechanism by which that hand is managing and manipulating their affairs in Benin, their affairs in Makodi, their affairs in Ibano, their affairs in Portacot, defining the ownership of the economic assets, the land upon which you stand does not belong to you. Since the title deed, the constitution is the title deed. The constitution that is supposed to be a union agreement have been toppled from what we agreed and replaced by something that was unilaterally imposed by a section of the country that wants to conquer the rest and own the land permanently. Go back to how Amadou Bello put it in 1960. So you can understand the danger you are in. There are people coming from 16 different countries armed and you cannot touch gun because the title deed by which they are managing that entire estate the title deed by which they are holding and managing that entire estate. The title deed that makes us one political union. That constitution already listed what you can do, what you cannot do. What you own, what you don't own. Your economic assets belong to that entity that has toppled the original arrangement we made. Because the original, like you heard for the, uh, uh, the, the, in the intro, the original arrangement that brought us together as one political union was one in which we were going to be a federation. A federation is like a independent countries, countries that could have been on their own, now cooperating as one political union, like we have in Europe, Germany, France, Portugal, Spain, and the rest of them cooperating as European Union. But in that European Union, Germany is in control of its affairs, generating its electricity, organizing its security doing his infrastructure, organizing his own elections. That was the kind of that was the kind of union we agreed to be in those ten years leading to nineteen sixty. But by the by the time in nineteen sixty six, sixty seven uh, the soldiers uh, came to settle the, this kind of big the politicians are doing now. That was what brought the soldiers to come to say it can continue. They were not come, they, they, they were not actually coming to govern. They just wanted to rearrange the whole place, bring back I wonder what they have, been put in, they, have, they have been put in prison for winning an election, uh, the independence election. That was all they planned, but they didn't get through because people stopped them. And then down the road, on the 27th of May in 1967, you see the kind of uh, false narratives that are thrown all over the place. 
it was on the 27th of May in 1967 that the four regions federating, the four regions that, that federated as the Federation of Nigeria, were fractured into 12 states. And the economic assets and the powers of those regions confiscated by that federal, the, the illicit federal government that emerged. Because you couldn't have a federal government if you no longer have a federation. By the time the five constitutions were toppled, Nigeria ceased to be a federation from that May of 1967. The first narrative that thrown all over the place, we have somebody talking about the Igbo blame. Nigeria is dying now because they, 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 were, they were chasing the Igbo to kill the Igbo. It was the British that turned the coup of January 1966. It was the British, I'm sure you've heard it from several quarters, including the, uh, the one uh, uh, certain Ijo compatriot uh, was uh, 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 saying on, on, on video. It was the British that turned what happened on January 15 in 1966 into an Igbo affair. It wasn't an Igbo affair. Ademo Yedo was not an Igbo man. Major Ademo Yedo that wrote the book why we struck. He wasn't an Igbo man. He was one of the we were all five majors that uh, decided it was time to go to stop the politicians from continuing in what they were doing. Then from that time it was called Igbo. Hiroshi emerged the head of state simply because he was the head of the army at the time. He was listed to be killed along with the politicians. Somehow the, the intelligence got to him and he managed to escape by whiskers. They already surrounded his place. But there was an underground tunnel from which he left the place. But in the decree number twenty, the decree number thirty-four, decree number thirty-four, the one they call unification decree, for which reason he was accused of uh, truncating the federal arrangements we had. Decree number thirty-four only created administrative, uh, some kind of uh, governance in place of the chaos, because the, the federal government had been decapitated. Two of the region, two of the four regions, their governments have been decapitated since the premiers have been killed, and so. What Hiroshi did with uh, Decree Number 34 of 1966 was mainly to get the military administrators he had appointed in the four regions to work with him as the coordinator together they formed the Supreme Military Council to take over the functions of the defunct government and the parliament of the time. Just a temporary measure to stabilize the place before they begin to think of how to get back to any kind of uh, organized governance. The four regions were still four. That was why he appointed the four governors. Usman Kasina in northern region, uh, uh, was a uh, Fajui in western region, Ojuku in eastern region, and uh, Ejo in, 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 in midwestern region. It was The four regions still had their constitutions, their economic assets still belonged to them fully. Nothing changed in all of that until that point in 1967 when on account of the continuing killing of, uh, of, of people in the, in the programs just the genocide that the eastern region came under such pressure as to now draw the line so that those who had not been killed will not be chased into the east it was on the eve of going to declare that drawing of line that that Biafra he was to pre go on himself was the one telling the story of it was to prevent the East from leaving the Union that they, you know, uh, created the 12 states to factor the Eastern region into three. That was how River State emerged. That was how Southeastern State emerged. That River State is today's Rivers and Bayesa. That Southeastern State is today uh, Cross River and Aquaibom. What was the purpose? The balance now being uh, the East Central States that is now the five Southeastern States. What was the purpose of that factor. The Cameroonian border, they didn't want the Igbo to have any access to international border. So the, the Cameroonian border is bounded by the south, is that the, the, the Coast River and Aquaibom of today, 100%. The Atlantic waterfront is uh, bounded by the river state that is now rivers and Bayesha. All in the bid, it was the British organizing all of this, and that is that is why the story you are going to hear of what will happen to the UK 
the blood of all these people that are being slaughtered in Nigeria across these last 55 years will get back to the head of the British crown and all of those who subscribe to that evil. And so, I'm just explaining to us, when you hear constitution, it's not that document that is painted green, white, and green. It is your land that is now part of Nigeria that we are discussing. Constitution means to constitute. Ijo land is now a portion of a Nigeria that can be managed under that title deed. That's what it is. And your signature is put there as the one who agreed with the rest of Nigeria to have it the way it is as one political union in which your economic assets now belong to an illicit federal government. Illicit because the federation collapsed. Nigeria became a unitary state from that 1967 that Bowen factored into 12 states which it went on factoring by decree upon decree until it became 36. He did the first. Mutala Mohammed came in 1976. Uh, he became 19. Then uh, uh, who was it that came again and, and added some? Abata, uh, 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 I think it was uh, Bangeda that came, did his own. Then Abata completed it. Where were the officers from the rest of Nigeria? These people had only one plan. That plan of Putman Danfodio the first time they got here in 1804, to take the entire territory. The British disrupted them in the 1860s, and they formed a joint venture that resulted in 1914, bringing what they had each captured on the two sides. You are still in the sky looking at this one estate. Look at the map that has yellow and white on your screen. Look at that map closely again. Those 12 states, those, the portion in yellow, is the 12 states that impose Sharia. The portion in white is the whole of the South and Middle Belt that is this alliance. The union we formed at the beginning was a secular union and a federation. You already understand the meaning of federation. In federation, you owned your sovereignty. You owned your economic assets. You contributed only a portion of your income to the upkeep of the center for the limited responsibilities the regions delegated the centers to do. It was only 15%, 15 as in one five, that you had to contribute. How did we then go from the federating units that owned their assets, controlled the, 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 what they did with the assets? You, you had your priorities for what you were going to do with what you had. That was why Awolowa could do what he did. That was what, uh, why Emma Bar could build what he built, including the Trans Amadi in Port including the, the, the Budukato Ranch, and all of there was the electricity that sat the whole of the east from Oji River, you know, a, a coal fired power plant. That was the basis of electricity for everybody. Electricity that did not fail. Aba was going on, Nature was going, Nehu was going. You saw what Awala did in the western region because he, he was in control of his own assets. So he prioritized education, he prioritized housing, he prioritized all kinds of things, healthcare that took brought better life for the people. All those things have now been truncated on account of the termination of those arrangements by military fiat. And who is that military? Who is that military? The military wing of the caliphate. Unfortunately for them, and that's why we are coming to speak to you now. You may look at the numbers and say, oh, we are not in millions. I'm sorry for the people who are staying in their ignorance. Whether they are president or senator or politician or businessman, anybody who is not listening to what you are saying now will be a victim, a casualty of what will happen. That constitution that ties us down because it is that false claim that we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having solemnly resolved, firmly resolved to live in unity as one indivisible entity. Do hereby make and give unto us the following conclusion. It is that false claim that makes your land, your entire land, Edo land, Edo land, Igbo land, it is that false claim that locks you down into this entity called Nigeria, into this 
into this forest of in, into this evil forest, into this union of death. And not only are you locked in here, the 68 items of exclusive list you see, the 36 states formation in which you are now exactly like the Berlin conference that divided Africa, you know, sitting in far away Berlin. They drew the map, they drew the lines on the paper with no reference to the people who lived in that Africa. Look at your look at look at Western region of today. Look at Benin Republic. Are there no Yoruba across the border there? Is there any in, in, if 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 nobody stops you? You are you are in Yoruba land as you cross the border, you won't even know because the same forest. There's no river in between. Yoruba people, just because France had an interest in Berlin Conference, they drew the line there. The same, the same motive for drawing all the lines they drew across Africa. I'm sure some of you listen to PLO uh, Lumumba, Professor Lumumba. The same motive for which they drew the lines they drew across Africa, fracturing Africa into 54 countries that amount to nothing. That is the same, you know, uh, strategy that brought up to be. 36 states, none of which can challenge that monster called federal government. And then, in the formation of 36 states, they also added local government areas into the constitution, which they had created unilaterally 774. Kano has 44 local government areas. Baeza has only 8. How did it happen? Because soldiers from the descendants of Amadou Bello, were unilaterally, no one of your people was part of creating that structure that now makes us permanent political minority. The people who are doing this are not bringing anything on the table. They are not contributing to what is being shared. But on account of being 36 states and 74 local government areas, they take 72% of everything, whether it is a license that is to be awarded or representation at the National Assembly or sharing of revenue, they take 72 percent, whether they're in government house as president or not. In that, in that uh, whatever is left, they now still have to share with you as government of federation. Even if a person just president, look at the number of ministers they have to appoint, look at where they have to come from. Even if Tinubu is president or Jonathan, then in the place of approving money by which federal government will do anything, look at the people who are in that National Assembly, the representation. So you are a minority front and back. It is your economic assets that is being used by this uh, criminal of, a, of, of an enterprise called Nigeria. The Nigeria that we agreed to be in died in 1966. The Nigeria that is there now is an imposter. A, 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 a blood-sucking demon feeding on the blood of no less than 5,000 people every day is because you have not died. The people who have been slaughtered in Plateau, the people who have been slaughtered in Benue, the ones who have been slaughtered in Zambu, elsewhere, the ones who were slaughtered in the East before, the ones who have been slaughtered in Igo and other coastal territories, the ones who have been slaughtered in Ekiti, they are dying to feed that monster. There is no other way there is no other way to stop that bloodshed. Is Tinubu not present now? Why are equity kings being beheaded in their homeland? And they sit and swear to defend and uphold that constitution that was imposed by this enemy, tying our hands to the back. I've talked about the formation that the 36 states and several and several government areas that take that make us minority that cannot say anything. Then you come to the 68 items of exclusive list. It is on account of that 68 items, there are 68 different ropes tying you to different stakes. The Niger Delta oil and gas is just one of the 68 items that Nigeria has become the owner of on account of that constitution. There is no mechanism by which Niger Delta will recover their oil and gas or their waters or their environment if that constitution does not go down. Every day, every day that constitution stays, the people who swear to defend and uphold it amongst you, whether they are governor or senator or House of Rest member or minister, all of them are the ones holding you hostage, tying you up for that monster to swallow you.
to, 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 to drink your blood. As it is for Niger Delta, so it is for the Yoruba. Every senator, every governor, every house member, including the House of Assembly, every commissioner, every council chairman that had to swear to defend and uphold that constitution in Yoruba land is the one holding you down for full to behead you. Full already took your economic assets. Otumba already spoke about uh, what happened uh, in 2021. April, March, April. After the 19th days, I think it was March 16th in Ibadan. Shane Makede was saying, no, uh, the federal government, please, uh, give me, uh, the, uh, you, uh, it was begging the National Assembly to allow him to, 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 to uh, mine gold. If the, or your state is filled with gold, or your, your an ocean, but they can't take one ounce of it because of that constitution that puts solid minerals in the list. As it is with Oshun and Oyo, so it is with uh, the people that own the coal, so it is with the bedway that has the uh, limestone that is allotted as concession to Dangote. Medori Bay is allotted the oil and gas in one side. All kinds of people, nobody from any of our areas is in control of any of those things. And we, 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 we have education. We are moving around, going around, thinking we know where we are going. They are professors of law. Challenge them with the recording of this. Challenge anybody that is a politician, anybody that is a lawyer, anybody that should know. The men of God that are luring you to election after election under this constitution. Because what do you get from it? It is what the constitution it is it is what the constitution stipulates that happens. The people you think are corrupt politicians, oh let us go and cure corruption. These are all ignorance that they are manipulating amongst you. It doesn't matter how many PhDs you have. The constitution mandates that corruption. In section six, section sixty, it absorbs government of responsibility towards you. The government does not owe you any obligation in black and white for school or hospital or security or welfare, anything at all. Then he gives the heads of the executive branch the spare key to the treasury in the appropriation provisions, section 81, 82 for the president, section 121, 122 for the governors. They can take all the money in the treasury without reference to even the executive the legislative branch. Then at section 308, they have immunity. So, all this talk about uh, corruption. In Nigeria, most of our people think that corruption is the problem. So, you know, officials are corrupt. They are wrong, dead wrong. The problem is, corruption is official. If you thought officials were corrupt, and therefore you bring them to book, where is the book? Where is the book? The book to which of the corrupt officials should have been brought is the constitution that is written by the beneficiaries of that corruption the ones who are holding onto your sovereignty onto your land onto your rights as 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 even human beings under this constitution you are slaves slaves don't have any human rights any lawyer that tells you he's a human rights lawyer Tell him that Tony Nadi said he's a criminal that ought to be stoned to death under this constitution. All these human rights uh, groups that are parading themselves all over the place. You are slaves. You have no rights. You have to fight and recover your sovereignty. That constitution is the mechanism by which your sovereignty is held. They call you to election and you go to answer them. Meaning that you want to remain in that enslavement. You want to remain available to be killed because back to the 68 titles of exclusive list, all the economic assets, the ports, the waters, the solid minerals, whether it is coal or limestone, everything that you could call economic asset and even the rights and the power 
to work those assets. Somebody that sees my code, say it belongs to him. I say, okay, wonderful. Can I, can you sell to me? I need electricity in Aba. I need electricity in Onicha and Nnewi. I want to buy that code, since you say it now belongs to you. The right to generate electricity is confiscated by that concession. So I have the capacity to generate my electricity. Like we have built the power plant in Ojiriba that worked perfectly for decades. Until Nigeria put electricity generation and transmission on the exclusive list, shut down that uh, 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 power plant. What you saw them celebrating the other day, a uh, geometric of uh, bad night. That plant has been completed since about 10 years. The gas that will power it will not get there because gas is still on the exclusive list. Only the federal government, even tomorrow morning, somebody can shut down that geometric plant from Abuja. Why would people with education and exposure be living under that kind of a nonsense because of a few politicians that want to be president and governor? As it is for electricity, so it is for road, so it is for security. The arms and ammunition are on that exclusive list. You cannot touch one gun. None of your governors, because some of our people ignorantly say, oh, if only the governor can do this, a form the delante group. The gun with which you are going to set up security to enforce your own laws, only the federal government can issue. So if that federal government is the one organizing the invasion against you, what are you going to do? Which gun are you going to use? And you see Tinobu now saying, oh, give land. What is the difference between what Tinobu is saying now and what Buhari and uh, Femi Additional was telling us the other time? Was it not Femi Additional that said, instead of you to be killed, uh, give land so that uh, you will not be killed? Was that not what Femi Additional said on behalf of uh, Buhari? Why is it so? Because of that exclusive list. Because of the fact that there is a federal government that is in monopoly of guns. Were you the one that signed up to that monopoly that the enemy should have all the guns and have your economic assets and have the right to, as I make, organize who will govern you? Since that attempts, there is nothing you are going to be able to do. There is nothing at all you are going to be able to do unless that constitution goes down. And so, every single day, anybody who is doing any other thing, about any of the things happening in Nigeria, whether it is corruption or insecurity or the killings or the, or the mass impoverishment, how did we come to this mass impoverishment other than the confiscation of all economic assets, development assets, development powers? You can't farm because people have sent their own people from Mauritania and Mali and, and Senegal to occupy your forests. Killing you and just mapping out the land. They've already shared it like promised land. And they are able to do that because they are still in Nigeria that, are, that brings them to your space. It is on account of that constitution that full of people can come from, from wherever they come and come to your village and shoot people and the, the heavens will not fall. They control all the armed forces. Did we not tell you a few months ago, yeah, about almost uh, seven, eight months ago, that they've not handed over the control of the of the military to, 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 to Tinobu? Is he, is he commander-in-chief? And they are marauding all over the place doing all of this? They have not handed that asset to him. He's not in control of the network of commands of the of the armory. He is not in control of the network of the, 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 the chain of command over the armory. The same way Shoneko was not in control at that time. That is what this interregnum is all about. The Fulani just put this fellow there to continue what they are doing. And here he is coming to establish Ruga on their behalf. Who knows some of the other things he had agreed with them that they have not told us? Why is Kerry still in NNPC with all of what was revealed against him? He had no control over that. He had no control over the guns. If you remove crude oil and you remove gun, what is he doing as president in the place? And so, let me just report. Let me just report. Between the last meeting, last 
Tuesday and today. I'm sure you have all seen what's been happening all over the place. The constitution that we have defeated, the National Assembly now say, oh, we are going to do amendment, we are going to write another constitution for you. And they are throwing all kinds of things. You saw the one uh, in which uh, Meka Nyoko and uh, this uh, fellow called uh, Wale Okumi that was involved with a uh, uh, Pronaco that went contesting election in all the years we finished Pronaco. We have a proposition on the table for how to solve this problem. A Meka Nyoko wants to call a meeting, a colloquium on the 18th of March to now begin to scratch our heads again. Oh, what is wrong with Nigeria? Where is the future of Nigeria? So, so, what are they going to do in that one day of colloquium that will compare with uh, the, what we have done for 24 years? Are they pretending they do not know that there has been a diagnosis of this problem, there has been a prescription that is already being treated? Look at what Benjamin Kalman and his co-travelers in Abuja, they want to go and write constitution. Guided by Rizabokova. So our sovereignty now belongs to them. And we are sit sit sitting around. And allowing them. The reason I sound the way I sound. Is not as if I can't talk to you like we are across a dining table. You will hear me. Yes, I'm, I'm talking to you now because in the days ahead, we have defeated that constitution. I'm sure some of us watch. Is there anybody present in this meeting who watched Ayo Adebanjo on Arise TV yesterday say that we have no union? Did anybody hear it or see it? Yes. Yes, sir. The consequence, the consequence of what Minas has done is that that constitution has been defeated comprehensively. We are in the process of the decommissioning. We don't need anybody's cooperation. You can't, you can't, whatever a fake document, whatever a forged instrument confess on you as, as a title deed gives you nothing if the owners turn up, if the authentic owners turn up. Minas has quietly organize the owners of this entire length and breadth of land that we call Nigeria to retrieve their sovereignty by working together to take down that constitution. And what do we mean by taking down that constitution? We pull back our signature that they falsely implanted. That is what this whole process has been all about. We went house to house from, from one ethnic group to the other started in the Obama's palace, the, the Obama Benin's palace, because he was the secretary of the Gawon's cabinet office in the time these things were done wrong. At the time they came back from Aburi and turned everything upside down and began to kill people. Then he later retired and became the Obama Benin. At the time we were putting this process together, Enoro leading, because Enoro on his mother's side is a, you know, a, 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 of that a royal house. We went and sat down, said, sir, the Nigeria that is built on the blood of the innocent, is he working for Benin Kingdom now? He says, no. Will you, will you and your people be willing to, be, to become a part of how we go about taking down the monster that is occupying Benin land today? As at that time, you knew the story of uh, the Benin girls uh, in Italy and elsewhere. They were raining all over Europe. What was the reason they couldn't function in Benin? Because Nigeria was occupying the space. He agreed with us and sent message to the ruling worry. House to house, we went from the, 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 the Benin to the, 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 the security, down to the Jota territories, down to the, uh, you know, uh, the Anang and uh, every territory. You know, the Obama in Calabar. Each place we got to, we went to the traditional institution. They summoned uh, a meeting of their leaders of thought. They called in their young people who were already carrying arms at the time. Quietly, we went across the length and breadth of Nigeria, including the middle, including the far north. Or how did Buhari turn up at our conference 
in 2005 and 6. How the Sahel is now Sultan is able to turn up in that conference. People who are present in this meeting, people who are listening, who are going to listen to this recording, we are giving you specific facts of what will happen to you, what has happened already, and what will happen more. The Fulani are encircling you in that your community where you think you have governor and you have senator that will plan for you. Your senator is not on your side. Your governor is not on your side. Anybody who has sworn to defend and uphold this constitution is on the side of that enemy for the benefit they get personally. That is what you must know. The bandits they created for you. Oh, I'm River State. I'm Abia State. I'm Imo State. I'm South South. I'm South East. Was any one of you present on the table the day they were drawing that those lines? They drew those lines to divide you, to be in enmity with one another, so that they can take you out one after the other. That's how they have succeeded in doing what they are doing so far. With that instrument that lock you down, and the formations in which you are not, you cannot cooperate amongst yourselves. Everybody thinks it's his neighbor that is the problem. Ogoli thinks his job must be killed. You security things uh 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 must be exterminated. Go and see what they're doing in Wari. In Bene, you see the you see you see the thief and the juku. Go and look at we have had the privilege of inquiring into all those conflict, you know, uh, 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 areas. It was it, uh, in every one case. It is the full and year with a desk in London, with a desk in London, making sure that things are the way they are. This is what we are unraveling. This is the monster, this is the monster that has held the black man down. Because as long as Nigeria is in this situation, nobody's going nowhere, including the ones who are uh, black Americans. It's because there's no country in Africa. That, that no, no, no country organized by black people that is on his feet. That's why they're being shot on the streets of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of United States. They amount to nothing in the eyes of the people who have organized their own society. Are they the ones that will come and recover Africa from their own bondage? What are we doing here? They're full of me with no, no, no education. Are the ones dictating what will happen to us? And we're parading our PhDs all around. Answering all kinds of title, professor. Let us dress back from whatever we were thinking before. Minas has more than 350 brokers, each of which can liberate thousands of people if they pay attention. There's a website you can go to www.ninasvoice.org. There's a YouTube channel. Just Nina's voice. Any any three five broadcasts you select. Leave what you are doing for one hour or two. Some of them, many of them are not more than fifteen minutes. A few are up to twenty minutes. There are some that are less than ten minutes. Just randomly select five. Leave whatever you are doing for because this could mean life or death for not only you. But hundreds of thousands or millions of people around you. Because for every day they do not know, this enemy is tiptoeing and coming closer. The day they descend on you, it doesn't matter whether you, you are a billionaire or you own an estate. Whatever you are, when they descend in your area, you will be just like other people. If you are lucky, you get killed. If they stir up things in the area, you can no longer function there. That's what has happened to the Middle Bay territories they have overrun. You think they are not coming to the south? They are, come, they are very much on their way. If not for what they are doing, Buhari will have led them through that. Uh, if not, that God made a way for us to get to Washington and put him on the, put Buhari on a head-on collision with the uh, United States. And we did all of this, and the people who are in that danger, are busy shouting obedient movement or uh, Bado movement. All the political parties subscribe to that constitution, including Peter B's Labour Party. You had when Peter B started this campaign by saying that constitution is not the problem. The young people who went to think of that election, who 
workers are being ruined now who are now feeling that hunger who are being chased out with, with matches and guns all over the place if they got to know that it will be new about this matter from 2012 when it was government in Anambra that Chima Achebe invited everybody to come to you know to come to listen to what could be done I flew to Orlando in Florida to address our people Peter B came to that meeting as governor of Anambra State. He had been knowing about this matter in this detail since that time. Why would he come out and begin to load people into a vehicle without an engine? People who are who are in the danger of death. It is Peter B that dragged us to this election more than anybody else. If that was Peter B was weaker than enough to drag us to this election, Kurubu would not have been president. If there was no election in 2023, we will have this madness. Look at the number of people that are dying all over the place for a problem we have solved since long time ago. Just because a few politicians want to go and make profit. And the rest of us just go side, go side. In a situation where your land is being targeted and you are being encircled by people who are armed, who have shared the land. And they call you uh, at their state. You are in light. Let us understand that we have limited time. You know, we talked about all the call that will happen in the first quarter. That first quarter is already 12th of March. It that the first of March will be the last day of that first quarter. That altar call is to separate those who stand with that constitution, who stand with the enemy, who subscribe to that constitution, from those who stand with leaders to take down that constitution. What I'm telling you now will become life and death, and it could be, it could be sudden. If Nigeria snaps ahead of when these processes begin to prevail. They are still struggling. The meeting they are going to have at the Institute of International Affairs, they will make a new colloquium to come and start to scratch the head 24 years after we have established who the enemy is and the instrument of that enemy. The enemy is that caliphate and their local agents, the willing tools. The instrument by which we are held down into bondage, being killed, is that constitution. The solution to the problem is to defeat both that enemy and its instrument. Which is what Minas has done in the legitimizing that constitution and building an alliance that isolates that enemy. Do we not see that Fulani is now being chased around by everybody? Because of what they are doing in everybody's space. Why is it only the Fulani that are killing in every other space? And so, people didn't know this before. They say, oh, don't talk about religion. Don't talk about ethnicity. But when they kill you, they are killing you because you are not Fulani. Otherwise, why are they killing in Zafaran Kasina? Are there not Muslims there? Oh, it is a jihad. Let us all join hand. We Christians. No. Why are they killing the, the house of Muslims? In in Asina and Zavara and all those places, so it is an ethnic agenda wearing the garment of religion. But the, the alliance of all of us who are victims of that invasion, victims of that enslavement, victims of that conquest invasion, armed with the constitution that was defeated, they stand no chance. There's no, there's no meeting we need to have with them. We only need to stand in our space by enlightening ourselves, connect with this information, and we can we can turn the whole thing upside down and without anybody firing at any one of us. There's nothing I've said here that I've not said on national TV. I turn to the face of the, the whoever is president. Are we not the ones accusing them of treason now? Is it not treason for them to topple our sovereignty and, and, and sign you know, uh, uh, to swear every four years to defend and uphold it, pointing guns at us, holding on to our economic assets, and then our own kinsmen join them. 
the city in Abuja, sharing money in trillions, and people are dropping dead on the streets of Ibadan. And I don't So we have a responsibility. Let us put aside whatever we were thinking before, whatever we were told before, let's put it aside and use the education we have to interrogate what is in black and white. There's nothing I've said now that is not written and presented in a formal way, both inside Nigeria and outside Nigeria. This matter has gone all the way to UN Security Council. This matter has gone into the chambers on Capitol Hill where the senators decide. The person speaking to you now has been inside those places discussing with the very people who have to deal with it. The U.S. and the U.N. have done their part by sending a rapporteur mission as Africa 2019 that declared our constitution as pressure cooker for injustice. If you doubt me, get on Google now and search Agnes Kalamat to see what the international, you know, uh, the stakeholders, the ones who will come to separate the fight if it becomes blue helmet situation. U.N. peacekeeping. Because that's where it's going. That's where it's going. There's an urgency to it, very serious urgency. Very, very serious urgency. The ones, anybody who knows how to reach any member of the parliament in Abuja should take the broadcast in which we address them and send to them. They are committing treason against the rest of us by holding on to the constitution we have rejected as basis of union. The constitution that make us slaves in our homeland because they are sharing money with those people. When things snap, because it could suddenly snap, we have already instructed those who will become the mob, the ones who are calling victims, the ones who are being chased around now with hunger and killing. If 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 something breaks down, if Nigeria breaks down the ways you know progressing to. The enemy number one will be anybody who will be counted on the side of that constitution. Whether you are doing political party, whether you have sworn to defend and uphold that constitution before, or you are planning to swear by going to be in political party because all the political parties subscribe to that. There's no, there's no, there's no difference whatsoever between PDP and APC and Labour Party and APGA and all the other parties. They all subscribe to that constitution, and so. When things will snap, there will be only one dividing line. Are you on the side of that constitution or you're on the side of Nina that want to take it down? Your life will depend just on that. And it's not for people for, for we in this meeting to come and determine. It is the mob that will use the formula that they have already been given. When you see that video, when you see that broadcast dealing with that. We call it a, a battle line. Just that battle line. The moderators can help with the full title. If you go on YouTube, if you go on YouTube and that battle line, you will see the broadcast in which we instructed those who become the answers of tomorrow, those who become the mob, the angry mob that will that will have to rescue themselves from this wicked operators of Nigeria under this constitution. They will be the one to determine. It's not this one speaking that will determine. Because I will not be in uh, Lafenwa. I will not be in Otanja. I will not be in Borokiri the day the mob will come upon you for being on the side of that constitution. For swearing to defend and uphold the enslavement. For being in support of the full enemy conquest going on. Because that will be the weight of the offense you have committed if you were, if you have ever sworn to defend and uphold that constitution, whether as council chairman or senator or governor or former minister, except you already identify with them now that that constitution has to be taken down. If you have not yet, and the trouble begins, you will not have the opportunity to explain to them that you are planning to. Anybody who knows anybody that needs to know, home and abroad, because the ones overseas can reach their friends at home to tell them that this is now become a matter of life and death. We must go to transition right now. That's the only thing we can do with this uh, election, inconclusive election of 2023. 
You can see that the Supreme Court defied the Constitution. There's a requirement for 25% that was not met. The Supreme Court waived it. The executive waived it. So they have, they have abandoned the Constitution on the street to die. You cannot continue to bind my hand and leg with that Constitution while you refuse to use it when it can bring us a different outcome. Our position would not have been different if it would have been swat, because we then say under which constitution, which Nigeria, to govern who? That you swear to defend and uphold my my statement with a forged instrument. That will have been the discussion between we and Peter Bina if they say he won. So there's no there's no no difference between any of them. The only thing that will solve this problem is for them to come down from their high horse or high horses so that we can go to a transition. Let us accept that we have not made any concession. Let us suspend every talk of election or wielding of power under this current fraud and go to transition. We are willing to accommodate a transition arrangement that still keeps them in nominal governance position. We are not asking them to leave government house now. But if they don't come if they don't come in good time to take advantage of what these 24 years of hard work, if they don't come in good time, the mob will explain the rest to them. They either surrender unconditionally to the to this proposition, this five point proposition that took so much to arrive at. that will save the lives of 200 million people that are now in danger. They don't come to 1% of that number, but they think they've become more important than everybody because they sit in far away Abuja. Abuja does not produce any of those monies they share. The owners of the... So that was, that's why we started with maps. We put map on the ground. Everybody will stand on their father's plot. The constitution that prevented them from touching gun is what was defeated. So guns will be in their hand. The economic assets that they couldn't touch before, the constitution was the one that took it. They will take over, they will take back those, they don't need anybody's permission even today to take back those economic assets. Get the guns and ask everybody else, anybody you don't invite, to dress back. So the people sitting in Abuja are going to discover that everybody has turned their back to that Abuja, asserting their right to self nation keeping with the dictates of their sovereignty. The only thing they need to be able to do all of that is that there is still a Yoruba land occupied by Yoruba people that has not been dislodged. That's all they require to take back their land in full and decide what they do with their sovereignty. If they want to go into fresh union with anybody else, of course. But if they decide they want to clean up their house for a while before discussing that in five years' time, like Gideon Oka suggested to the ones he has felt, that is what it will be. We are in a position to get this thing done in the first half of 2024. So every day we postpone it, it will be because our ignorance and stupidity is keeping us from saving ourselves from clear and present danger. I stop here. Thank you.